Right, I'm here today on this job to fit a timber batten for a curtain pole. Now that's my preferred method of attaching the curtain poles, uh, especially in this case where I know that the plaster has been drilled to death previously and had numerous repairs on there. And the lintel is just above the windowsill and another reason is if I'm drilling the holes for the curtain pole and I do hit problems then it's going to make a little bit of mess I'm going to have to refill them, re-drill them whereas with the timber batten method exactly the same but I can actually adjust the holes on the timber and re-drill those and fill the holes and it won't be seen uh, as a much easier job and also recommend this for tenanted properties, rented properties where there's not as much care taken with the curtains. If the curtains are yanked on, pulled, it will stand a lot more strain. And I'm going to get on with that today. I'll show you the timber that we'll, I'll be using. It is a piece of plain all round. And it is what, 70 mil by 20 mil. Now, if you notice, I have a pencil line on there. I've marked the centre of the timber for my holes. I'll be drilling approximately five holes, depending on the condition of the wall. The timber is actually about 400 mil longer than the window reveal. So that gives me about like 200 mil either side. So what I've done, I've put, already put a mark on the wall. Well, if you can see that on the camera, a pencil mark on the wall. I've used a level, took that line straight across. And I'll measure my 200 mil on the timber, which I have done there. And I'll be fitting this approximately sensor between the window, top of the window frame and the ceiling. Now, they do say the higher up you fit it, the gives you an illusion of taller ceilings, so that's, I'll leave that entirely up to you. I try and fit it roughly 50-50. So before we do all that, I'm going to Rather than just put this timber up, drill this piece of timber as it stands, planed all around, I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to put a little bit of an edge on it on my router, my palm router, just to give it a little bit more finesse as opposed to sticking that piece of timber straight on and the curtain pole on top. So we'll get on with that.
okay so that's achieved the desired effect there that chamfered those edges nicely it's just really give it a little bit more style take that little bit of extra time just as opposed to fitting a piece of timber under the curtain pole which doesn't look very classy at all if you ask me so once it's painted I think it'll look quite nice so the next job is to get it fitted get the wall get the um, wall drilled and plugged all ready for the curtain pole so I'm going to position this for my line is on approximately the centre but most importantly is the line for the 200mm over past the reveal is equal on both sides you see that pencil mark I mentioned earlier I'm just going to check my level make sure we're nice and square yep I'm okay on that side I'm okay on this side I'm just going to drill the first hole to get me set up which I've already marked so I'm going to drill that take it off the hung up Right, that's my first hole drill. There we are. While I'm doing it, I shall drill all the other holes. I've got five here. I may have to move, as I mentioned earlier, if the plaster is crumbling at the back, but it's not a big issue this way because if it crumbles at the back, I can always move the holes further along and re drill them and just fill the existing holes. So it's a lot easier this way because um, you'll find that the curtain pole brackets, the holes for the fixings are quite close together. If you disturb one, you're guaranteed to disturb the other. So it makes it awkward for mounting that way. So yeah, like I say, I'll drill all these holes and I shall counter sink them at the same time. Just quickly counter sink them and we'll get on with the actual drilling of the pasta. been drilled now and countersunk it's already going up and the bit I'm using I'll be using a 6mm masonry bit the screws are roughly 50mm long and heavy duty plugs for 6mm plugs for the bit to actually go through to the block work as opposed to going in at the renovated plaster so that's what I'll be using. So let's get this first one up. Uh, acts as a pivot point. Using my homemade dust catcher to keep my cleaning up a little bit easier. That's the first hole. Right, that's our pivot point. Should buy quite a strong fixing. Let me 
small drill back in the bit. I'll just I'll level this up again, make sure we're perfectly level. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to mark these holes. What I've done now, I've just screwed them screws in partially, just so they're protruding from the back, just to make lining up the plugs a lot easier. Ready to get that fitted. Now, what I prefer to do, I prefer to screw this up with a hand screwdriver rather than using an attachment on the DeWalt, just so I don't strip them or spin them plugs out. get that up there and we'll get it fitted.
Just going to line them all up first. Or we talk them up. To make sure they're actually heading for the centre of the plugs. One thing I will say is they do seem to be gripping quite well. That is going to stand quite a bit of pulling on, a bit of fixing than expected on this plaster. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to, as a secondary precaution and just a bit more finesse, is any slight gap between the timber and the wall, it doesn't look bad on this one, is gun my mastic gun, sealant gun, along the top and decorator's cork, those gaps these screw heads can either be filled or, I mean this will be staying on won't be coming off, it can either be filled or the little white screw caps which we have gives it a little bit of a decorative effect the middle one will probably be getting hidden with the bracket anyway so we don't need to worry about that so the next job is to do the corking and the filling. Right, so that's all the corking. A nice finish, head and all. Any very slight gaps, which wasn't too bad on this one. So I've actually wiped the pencil marks off, that comes off very easy. And while I've got the damp cloth in your hand, just to stop any further pencil marks bleeding through the paint, just wipe those off. Just clean that up. Always worth taking a little bit of extra care on these jobs. Take a little bit of pride in it. What I'm going to do with those screw heads in a second is just put a blob of adhesive on there and I shall fit the white screw caps as opposed to filler. 
and then a coat of paint. At least using this method, you can always access them at a later date if you didn't need to have to take it down. We'll do that with all of them now. Okay, so that's had a coat of paint and that's all finished.